sum up uh, my topic within a time frame which is allotted to me but uh, uh, so uh, especially when you talk about cam programming uh, when you talk about cam programming uh, using any of the tool so basically uh, it is very much required to know how the tool works so demonstration of tool is highly important as well as what would be the application of those tools in the manufacturing environment that is also important so now we will see there are n number of uh, tools which are available in the market for uh, the manufacturing uh, using cam right so um, especially few name of them are master cam dell cam and uh, uh, uni unigraphics cam even creo cam is also available um, my specialization is in CAD CAM and especially I'm oriented towards more on CAM. So CAM programming is very essential for uh, the automation. And it is a part of industry 4.0 where you need to automate any machines. And automation highly required to reduce the effort, human efforts, increase the accuracy, precision of the part. And you get a reduction in the scrap right so in order to improve the productivity you go for automation and you go for automation you need a finish in microns right you want a finish of your product in microns so many industry are oriented towards cam programming now uh, the today's agenda of my lecture is uh, a small description where we people are using cam programming here at nit surat what is our purpose exactly what we do here using cam programs and later stage means 50 percent of our presentation will include the demonstration of the cam tools how uh, we use that cam tool in actual manufacturing so let us begin with the slide uh, presentation on uh, the application of this cam tool in a, in the application uh, application of this cam tool in forming and then we'll see actual how we can use it Right, so I share my screen with you. Yes. I hope that the screen is visible to you. Yes. Now the first, uh, the forming process was invented by Mason, and later uh, they filed one U.S. patent, and then after 2001. This uh, incremental forming technology is uh, widely spread in the market. So the motivation behind of having this uh, forming technology is heterogeneity, versatile application, economic production and flexibility. What is heterogeneity? Heterogeneity itself that one product is different from another product. Versatile application, obviously if there is a heterogeneity, the application of the product may change only you change the material and you can uh, change the product say if you change the design right uh, of the product you can multiple uh, uh, products you can make economical production so economical production means if i i have one machine cnc machine if i program something if i am getting that product you know there was a serial when i was a childhood the, the, the um, agenda of that serial was he draw some drawings and that drawing becomes reality right so something something like that if you make the program something and you can get the product in reality so it is flexible so you can see some of the applications i will showcase here in uh, bullet train one of the part is manufactured using forming new well-known company uh, ford is very good company in automotive sector they have manufactured their logo uh, using incremental forming last uh, two months back i visited iit madras to professor hariharan they received some grant of rupees uh, in crores i don't know exact number but they got from mahindra automobile company you know mahindra and mahindra and it is co-sponsored by Ministry of Heavy uh, Heavy Engineering, Ministry of Heavy Engineering, Government of India. So now, the uh, government and all uh, private organization are looking for sustainable manufacturing. If you, uh, I will go uh, 
again in deep i will not go much deep in sustainable manufacturing but the logic behind sustainable manufacturing is energy efficient manufacturing where you need a very small amount of energy you spent very less number of uh, lubricant less amount of lubricant so very um, you know very small, so your efficiency has to increase that is the logic behind the uh, this uh, um, sustainable manufacturing so this forming which i am talking about incremental forming where we are we are using this unigraphics uh, software for manufacturing the cam tool you can uh, prepare uh, multiple parts now you here you can see that the there will be some uh, blank will be kept and the tool will come it will rotate uh, after one rotation it take a depth of delta z direction and there will be clamp at the two side to uh, apply a force on the remaining part of sheet which is not involved in the forming operation that is called blank holding force and there will be some support support will be uh, there uh, you know uh, uh, at the bottom and there will be there are two motions uh, of the tool um, uh, the first is uh, similar to earth which is revolving around Hello. I think uh, some technical issue at the speaker side. I request all of you please be online. Uh, hello all the participants it seems uh, the speaker is having some te difficulties uh, technical difficulties he is joining now due to this internet connectivity i logged out but i again rejoin yes uh, no issue sir no issue please Now, uh, as you can see, uh, the process, uh, am I audible to you? Yes, Hello? sir, you are audible, but uh, yes, uh, audible. it's not yet shared, sir. Yes, it's about to share. Yes. Uh, yes, sir, we are able to see. Am I audible to you? Go ahead, sir. 
Yes, sir. Yes. Can you able to see my? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, yes. Now, Is it yes, sir? Is it yes? I will not talk more about the process, but more about the application. Yes, yes. More about the applications. Uh, you can see that uh, the the uh, you the you when you when you form some uh, component. your main agenda is to uh, you know uh, the material is able to form material is able to form and uh, not to be uh, able to fracture so um, any uh, uh, in any engineer or operator who work on uh, metal forming processes he always uh, try to uh, uh, minimize the fractures minimize the fractures right and therefore you can see that There are some mathematical formula. As uh, which must be known to someone, so that uh, they can avoid the fractures. They can avoid the fractures where. Uh, Uh, you can see this this is the part which uh, we manufactured using a cnc uh, tool and this is uh, uh, you know uh, we can find out what will be the thinning rate of the material so printer nikalo na you remove the printer yes. now here are the small applications you can see uh, that are so very little may or exit process uh, this is the application of uh, using machine tools is called uh, mechanical press mechanical press now this uh, these are mechanical blades Uh, which are uh, useful in case of uh, um, the uh, when the patient uh, have head injury uh, when there will be some accident and uh, in uh, svnid surat we are preparing uh, this uh, cranial plates at low cost at low cost and uh, uh, we 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 have used uh, some titanium grade 2 materials uh, and we are forming at uh, different temperatures uh, that is called uh, say at elevated temperature we form it and uh, uh, these can be uh, 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 these uh, plates can be affordable for the poor families uh, which are experiencing a uh, you know uh, which uh, uh, this cranial damages right their um, bro uh, bone has been broken due to accident or something so we are we are already been uh, uh, in consultation with one neurologist and we have prepared this cranial implants uh, in our laboratory so uh, these are some applications and uh, you know the most important part here i want to show you when you form it something the, it is a one kind of machining activity so where the lubricant in, uh, lubricant selection is very important lubricant selection is very important so we tried with different different types of lubricants uh, lubricants are uh, uh, the uh, see there are three types of lubricant majorly one is uh, say oil lubricants and second one is called uh, the uh, this is gel kind of lubricant say it is called um, grease grease lubricants so now you can see when we uh, have performed the forming operation with different different lubricants we do, we receive different coefficient of frictions so you have to uh, uh, decide a, a lubricant very wisely uh, in order to reduce the friction so you know that uh, the friction exists between the two material will lead to Uh, intermetallic uh, uh, tensions and uh, there is a severity of cracking of the material so uh, that study we have performed but uh, here i want to go to more about the use of uh, uh, cnc machine tools in forming operations so i go uh, next to my ppt and i want to describe about uh, uh, one important aspect of high speed incremental forming this was the work performed at warsaw institute of technology in poland where you can see this Uh, yeah we have selected the two materials one is aluminium one is dc04 steel and these two materials have different properties and uh, we have performed some uh, experimentation 
so experimentation on control on uh, is performed on cnc control head in hand controller and you can see the part is uh, the, the geometry is like this and here you can see the main agenda of the part is uh, we are um, uh, seeing the what uh, what is the ability of forming of the material when uh, we 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 increasing the forming angle and uh, simultaneously step depth uh, from a, a smaller amount to large large extent right now you can see a particular combination the same study is repeated for dc04 steel now you can see the first sample aluminum underscore 50 underscore 0 0.2 it means that uh, aluminum material at uh, 50 is the uh, wall angle and 0 0.2 is the step depth here you can see 50 is repeated here 50 and 0 0.2 is here 0 0.2 now in such a case now in such a case uh, you can see the material is getting formed now you can see using the cnc machine tools we received the part is formed but uh, you can see when, he, when i increase the step depth from 0 0.2 to 1 uh, you can see the material the the part is fractured what does it mean it means that if you want to form a material of aluminium with a given formability with a given formability you have to control the formability with the step depth with a given forming angle you can control the formability using step depth so this study we have performed and then uh, now depend now the, the time for forming is also important because this particular um, technique is used for rapid prototyping and for rapid prototyping the word is rapid so you can get a rapid production now therefore we have also performed the time study in time study you can see for aluminium material uh, the the one sample experiment aluminium uh, 60 degree at 0 0.2 wall angle which required a time of 4338 seconds uh, so this is a time for cnc machining the same uh, time we can uh, same product with a considerable quality we obtained with uh, 686 so now you can see that uh, there is a drastic reduction in the forming time due to the uh, use of wise parameters so para what parameters we have improved from uh, here so now here uh, 60 underscore 0 0.2 uh, the feed rate is uh, small now here we increase the feed rate i think here feed rate is 1400 and here foot uh, the speed feed rate is 3000 so and their step depth is 0 0.2 here step depth is 0 0.6 now drastically uh, drastically change between the step depth and the feed rate feed rate is a uh, uh, feed rate is like uh, the um, uh, distance traveled by a tool in unit time uh, called feed rate now similar exercise we performed and we got uh, the very interesting result uh, uh, in terms of uh, formability, in terms of surface roughness, in terms of hardness. So we characterize the material. Here you can see that when we perform the similar operations on steel, uh, initially uh, the steel material at 65 degree angle uh, and 0 0.2 is the step depth. Uh, the uh, forming time is 4680. But uh, however, when you increase this uh, using 3000 uh, is the feed rate. Uh, the time is uh, you know time is uh, increased to uh, reduced to 2255 but still the component is formed again we we perform some tests to check the uh, uh, you know uh, forming ability of the material then we uh, talk about the thickness distribution of the material you can see the previous graph which talk about thickness distribution so uh, it is expected that thickness distribution is a uh, uniform throughout the uh, material but in metal forming operations, it is not possible. So therefore, there are a large number of study of strain pass and all people are working on it. So, uh, you know, this is volume, uh, uh, volume is constant in the metal forming. Somewhere there is a thickness reduction, somewhere is the increment of the thickness. This is the principle. So, uh, if you talk about in the strain, stress or strain, we call it as uh, epsilon x, that is x direction uh, strain, strain along x direction, plus strain along y direction, plus strain along z direction is always equal to zero right so I, I won't go in depth uh, there is will be stress ratio and strain ratio and there will be the relation between stress and strain, strain ratio uh, so uh, here uh, as per the topic of this discussion of today's class is more i should talk about the cam tools so then i so these are the parts which we formed uh, uh, can, uh, yes i i change the slide now is it reflecting can you see the parts yes now you can see that these are the parts of consisting of some material of aluminium and uh, aluminium 5754 and dc04 dc04 is about uh, dc04 is a steel material uh, dc04 is a steel material but uh, this dc word uh, we use uh, we don't use as indian but a european uh, nomenclature it is 
DC04. Uh, in India, it is called FEP04. Uh, but uh, this is European nomenclature. So we performed it. Now you can see that uh, we, we we studied this particular using machine tools. Using machine tools. Now I will continue uh, to uh, one of my um, colleague, uh, Mr. Sudarshan. He will demonstrate how uh, the CNC uh, programming uh, uh, possible to prepare these components in uh, you know in reality. In reality, now in um, uh, you see the conventional manufacturing processes one should need a particular type of tool and the punch to manufacture any of the part so for example if the geometry changes slightly you need to prepare a new tool and it is only possible in mass production in say uh, very less, uh, less number of uh, quantity to be manufactured it is not advisable therefore this uh, single point incremental forming tool are uh, useful in rapid prototyping and uh, you know uh, when you want to prepare some models uh, and some uh, implants say they are highly customized say i told you about the canonical plates so the bone structure of him uh, xyz person is different from abc person right so every person has individual bone structure so people have working for customized production of this technology so uh, let us begin with uh, the cam programming thank you And show them. You go to camp programming and show them. Oops. Yeah, good afternoon to all. Good I hope the uh, mic is visible to everyone. Uh, So coming to the uh, CAM profile, so we have here Yeah, for, uh, for our uh, <clears throat> manufacturing of the uh, uh, so we are using here NX12 for the uh, modeling as well as the uh, uh, generating the uh, tool path of the uh, required shape and size of the uh, frustum. So we have uh, uh, we have modeled this uh, frustum uh, in in the uh, present uh, software that is NX12, uh, where we have taken uh, the geometries. As uh, like a uh, major die as a 50 and the minor die as a uh, of the tool uh, of the of the frustum as 20 and uh, radius we have kept uh, uh, of the of the frustum at uh, 60.8 and uh, this is the overall dimension of the frustum. <clears throat> So uh, now the after the preparation of the frustum, we have to set the uh, 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 coordinate axis at the at the uh, starting of the uh, sheet where we are uh, taking the uh, datum datum uh, plane and uh, uh, and then we will add the uh, uh, manufacturing process to to the to the frustum coming to application and we can see here you can see here manufacturing if we add manufacturing to the uh, model, we'll we'll see here uh, we'll see here the uh, creation of the uh, profile path. <clears throat> so we have uh, selected here Z level profile, where we can uh, we we have uh, taken the geometry of the workpiece, and we, you can see here uh, by the display uh, that uh, we have selected the part uh, we, uh, part, and uh, through this we can select the path. Uh, part uh, of the workpiece, and uh, and then we can go for uh, uh, defining the cut area, cut area from this uh, option. Uh, yeah, so uh, we have already defined the cut area. That is the, that is we can see here. This is the cut area, uh, where uh, where the uh, uh, path uh, tool has to move through it, and uh, the software is going to generate the tool path. So uh, for the same, we, uh, we have uh, we have generated our tool of uh, spherical end. You can see here, uh, yeah, 
you can see here we have generated a tool of uh, dia 10 and uh, here here we can see the uh, specifications of the uh, tool yeah so uh, after creating uh, generating the tool of spherical end uh, we can we can go for uh, we can go for uh, 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 tool path setting tool path setting yeah so from here we are first uh, option we are what we are getting is uh, yeah method which method we are taking uh, we are going to opt for the r operation that is uh, mill finish mill rough or mill semi finish so we are opting for the mill finish So next, uh, uh, before uh, defining these all merge distance, minimum cut lengths, and maximum maximum distance, we'll come to the cut level. We can see here. Uh, uh, come to cut level. So we uh, the height of uh, the depth of the uh, first stroke is 40, and that has to be selected. And uh, it will it will set it automatically by the system. And then we are, we are going to define here our depth per cut. That is step depth of the of the first stroke. Uh, so uh, uh, after completing one contour of the tool. Will uh, how much depth it is going to go uh, in z direction that we have to define here. That is, we have uh, we have taken as 0.3 uh, mm per depth. Yeah, we we can we can uh, go for uh, uh, according to our uh, selection. That is 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.5, whatever we can have. So if we if we set there, if we feed the uh, uh, depth, we can see here uh, these these changes. We uh, uh, these changes uh, in the uh, in the merge distance, minimum cut length, and maximum distance we take automatically. Now coming to the cutting parameters, uh, yeah, we will see here few options here. Like uh, here, how the how the connections of the tool and the and the cut area uh, should be. So here you can see here we have three options: direct on path, ramp on path, and stagger ramp on path. So or uh, use transfer uh, method. So uh, we have uh, taken here direct on path, so th so to minimize the um, uh, manufacturing time. Because in a transfer method, uh, a tool is uh, ret retracting to its original original uh, 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 initial initial uh, initial stage, and then it is uh, again coming to the uh, manufacturing part. So in direct path, after completing the one contour, it is going to this going for the second contour directly without retracting. And uh, and then we uh, yeah this is the most important part of the uh, um, um, creating the tool path. And uh, now coming uh, now coming to the free, uh, non cutting moves, the uh, 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 software will take default settings. And uh, this uh, coming to feed and speed, we can we can feed here uh, like uh, what the feed we need. That is uh, we have taken here 300 mm per. Uh, uh, um, Yeah. And then coming to the uh, spindle speed, we have taken uh, 500 RPM for uh, in uh, uh, clockwise direction. And uh, yeah, and here we have taken feed rate mm per minute, 300 mm per minute and 500 uh, RPM uh, in clockwise direction. So after uh, completing all the uh, criteria required for the creating the tool path, we can generate here the tool path. What are the important steps to log interface? So uh, coming, uh, so uh, for the for the Z level profile, we are going to select first uh, uh, part, uh, and then we are going to define the cut area. Uh, from uh, we we have defined the uh, cut area, and then we are going for uh, creating uh, the tool for the same. <clears throat> we have where we have uh, taken this vertical ended tool, and then going for the uh, going for the uh, uh, path uh, path setting where we have taken the mill finish and then uh, uh, feeding the cut levels and that is uh, uh, 0.3 mm per depth we have uh, we have taken and then going for the uh, uh, cut uh, cutting par uh, cutting parameters that is we have we are directly engaging the tool on the on the part and then we are going for the feed and speed where where we have uh, taken uh, spindle speed 500 uh, rpm in, in clockwise direction and uh, feed rate of 300 mm per minute. So, uh, giving all these parameters to the uh, uh, processor, it will generate the uh, complete uh, uh, tool path where we can see here and we can verify the same with the with the simulation uh, uh, by performing the simulation on the uh, uni graphics itself. You can see here. <clears throat> 
if we stop uh, if we stop the uh, uh, like uh, simulation we can see here feed rate is 300 mm per minute <clears throat> So finally, we can see here our uh, tool path has been generated. Mm. This is what the tool path has been generated by the uh, Uni Graphics, and these same tool paths can be uh, can be transferred to the real machining world, where we can uh, can have our desired size of the machine. Now coming to the uh, after uh, checking over all the tool path whether it is correct for our uh, geometry or not, and then we can uh, we can transfer this. Uh, Hello, Prashant Sarvade, sir. We can generate Prashant Sarvade. Please mute yourself. Hello. Uh, after after uh, the tool path, we can go for post process of the uh, of the uh, part where we can to have the real world manufacturing. That is, you can see here we are now generating the uh, NC NC uh, code. Yeah. So uh, finally, we got the uh, coordinates as well as the program complete program. To be feed or uh, to be fitted in the uh, uh, three axis milling machine, where we can uh, uh, we can uh, have the our desired uh, product to what we are going to manufacture. That is the uh, uh, first jump. So uh, this is what is all about unique graphics. Can you talk more on the climates. Hmm. Um, you you explain. Hmm. Yeah. So uh, this is all about the uh, uh, creating the model to the coming to the real world of the uh, uh, manufacturing. So uh, we have seen here, uh, like uh, the, how we have uh, generated the uh, model as well as the as well as the tool, uh, as well as tool path where we can uh, we can have uh, the <clears throat> uh, first term. Uh, this is the first term with the uh, circular uh, radius and. Have Having the uh, uh, continuously change, changing the uh, uh, wall angle throughout the geometry, and we can say we can prepare for the uh, uh, pyramid. I can show uh, one more like model which I have prepared. Uh, that is a pyramid one. <clears throat> With the help of the same using. Uh, uh, so uh, for the, I have prepared one more uh, that is a pyramid, <clears throat> and I have created the uh, tool path uh, by same process as I have discussed for the first term. So uh, yeah, so come to the uh, uh, settings what I have used for the um, pyramid. Uh, so here the same cut level I have kept here that is a point two three. And uh, tool geometry uh, is the same spherical end. <clears throat> spherical, uh, spherical end. And, uh, and you can see here. Speed feed. So here coming the uh, feed and speed, uh, we have set here the uh, feed at uh, 250 uh, mm per minute and the spindle, uh, it's uh, up to our uh, design, uh, like uh, what parameter we are going to have for the pyramid as I have uh, kept uh, 600 uh, spindle speed. Left, left. I think your connection is lost. So you can you please uh, reconnect 
so uh, so uh, again repeating the same uh, i i know that within 30 minutes it is uh, uh, not uh, enough to prepare or to understand any cam programming but it's just uh, our efforts that this can be possible here you can see in my screen this kind of part uh, which has uh, some varying wall angle conical frustum that we manufactured using uh, the machine called cnc now here here you can see the geometries are different here the second part we manufactured using this uh, equipment uh, cnc machine with uh, the uh, now you can see the program is changed now the geometry you can see the minor area of this particular part is different than the first part which is in my right hand right hand side and the second part you can see the pyramidal frustum so the pyramidal frustum also we made so uh, the logic behind preparing the two different parts is to plot a forming limit diagram so those uh, might be working on forming limit diagram they might know about the strain paths uh, so uh, the material is biaxially stretched at different uh, uh, locations at some locations they are plain strain stretching uh, uniaxial stretching biaxial stretching right so beta ratio beta is the ratio which are going to change in every part so therefore we prepare a different parts and we are uh, more focus on the forming limit diagram because uh, we get uh, two different combinations of the strain at uh, different locations the straining uh, is at uh, the flange is different uh, in the wall it is different and it's at, at the end corner it is different so using cnc machine tools we are very successful in manufacturing the tool paths uh, in manufacturing of the these parts using different tool paths and customized production is possible so i can show you the simple video of uh, this particular path so that uh, you can understand easily how uh, one can use a different uh, tool paths uh, different uh, preparation of different tool paths for manufacturing of complicated components uh, someone asked about non non axisymmetric yes uh, axisymmetric and non axisymmetric parts are also uh, manufactured uh, using uh, with this technology i just show you uh, Uh, this uh, yes you can see that i think uh, it is there my downloads you can see this Can you see the video? Yes, sir. We were able to see that. Yes, we are able to see. Yes, they 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 will show, they will see the video. I think yes. yes. I think uh, there is a problem here, but uh, there I think it's not a problem.
Yes. So this is uh, all about uh, the uh, application. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, this is all about the applications of uh, CNC machine tool. That is the what is the topic of your uh, today's uh, HTTP is uh, advancement of automated tools. So these are the advancement of automated tools in the processing of variety of components of variety of shapes uh, based on your need in uh, many automotive applications, aerospace applications, uh, if any key applications or uh, especially uh, on cranial implants. So these these are very useful. Uh, we are also collaborated with some neurologists in Surat, uh, where uh, we. What is the problem? Yes. So our trial is very successful. We prepared some cranial implants. And soon it will be, you know, commercialized uh, technology in the market. We are trying in that those directions. So there are three uh, materials which are very common for biomedical application. One is AZ31B, uh, which is magnesium alloy, titanium grade 2, uh, titanium grade 5, and PMMA sheet, PMMA uh, sheets, that is polypropylene, uh, uh, polypropylene, that is polymer which is also very commonly used in biomedical application. So we are focusing on you know, presently titanium materials to prepare uh, some customized cranial implants. And uh, someone asked uh, these, these all components uh, what I shown you in the presentation, which is axisymmetric. But yes, obviously non-axisymmetric parts also can be manufactured using the same. Only uh, uh, it's a duty of the programmer is to generate a program and feed uh, those program to a machine tool to manufacture and uh, you know that uh, in the chapter of flexible production as you can see that if you increase the variety of production there will not be a possibility of mass production so mass production is only possible for standardized part like screws nuts these are standardized part bulbs or the fittings or the pipes right these are standardized parts but uh, the uh, these special applications, which are non-standardized, which are highly customized, in custom highly customized production, and now day-to-day -day life, there will be high diverse. Uh, uh, there is a diverse world. You can see that there is a China. Someone prepare a bus using incremental forming. They prepare the panels or the uh, all the dashboards and all the body of this car using forming technology. So now the forming is evolved like anything and prepare uh, people can manufacture a customized product based on their need right so this is only be possible using uh, this forming this name is also called dialysis forming so in our uh, workshop in uh, nit surat we have set up of uh, this cnc machine tool we have set up for thermal camera to check the thermal effects we have a wire radium machine we have a lot of machines uh, to measure the corrosion of the material now you can you can see that after processing of the parts on cnc machine there will be elongation of the grains of the material along the direction of the force there will be grain refinement and uh, since the grain size is reduced uh, there will be increasing the strength of the material that is um, analogous to the hall pitch equation so uh, many things uh, material characterizations uh, is uh, a very large a uh, domain of uh, engineering research uh, which are uh, we are for we are focusing our uh, all research in material processing manufacturing um, then mass man mass manufacturing uh, at least it, it is not possible for mass manufacturing but at least uh, we can uh, try that how much extent we uh, reach to mass manufacturing how much uh, uh, we reduce the lead time of the manufacturing so the many aspect we are studying in this direction so any question from the audience are highly welcome. Yeah, please, any question? If you, uh, yeah. yes. Yeah, thank you very much, sir. This is uh, Dr. Jaykiran Reddy. In fact, uh, you, you were having a few questions uh, in the 
uh, chat box, but simultaneously you are uh, answering them. You are almost doing the multitasking there. Yes. Uh, uh, so in, one question is, what major advantage do you get if you use this incremental forming instead of 3D printing? Those implants that are uh, mentioned. Yes. So the first is uh, 3D printing. People are uh, working on 3D printing. And, uh, you know, uh, there, there is some company, I guess, which we already seen the products which are 3D printed. And uh, these implants need a metal 3D printer. One metal 3D printer costs around more than two crores. One 3D printer, one metal 3D printer costs around more than two crores. It's very expensive. So one uh, disadvantage is high capital cost. Uh, second is, uh, you know, the if you uh, if someone buy that particular metal 3D printer in our NIT Surat, there is a PDEU Gandhinagar uh, that, that uh, initially PDPU. They have their own. Uh, setup of uh, metal 3D printing and many, many NITs and IITs have that setup. It is very expensive. Therefore, unit cost of production is very high. Uh, for cranial implants in biomedical application, one product they are selling in the market with a cost more than 90,000 to more than 90,000, not below. The size of the uh, cranial plate is around 30 mm by 30 mm. Same plate uh, can be manufactured using incremental forming, uh, say 2000 rupees. So uh, you check the difference, 2,000 rupees and 90,000. So difference of 88,000. But this technology is commercialized. We are uh, planning to depute in the market. So we are working on it. So hopefully uh, we are at the initial stage. We are very successful. So uh, the first is, and in case uh, one thing, uh, one uh, I should uh, uh, want to remind uh, to all the participants that using for this incremental forming, this is highly localized forming. You can see that uh, the tool will be in contact at, uh, you know, at a, at a single instant, the tool is in contact at a single point with the tool, uh, with the workpiece. So single point contact. So uh, the, the deformation is highly localized. You know, uh, if you see the forming limit curve in conventional stamping, plain strain, plain strain deformation is, uh, we avoid, we avoid plain strain deformation. But here, the formability is substantially increased and there is a phenomenal increment in the formability as compared to stamping. So there are a few more advantages. I, I, I talked about flexible manufacturing. I talked about sustainable manufacturing. Sustainable. Sustainable means lifelong. Lifelong technique of manufacturing. So this is sustainable manufacturing. Right? So uh, everybody is talking about sustainability and uh, after 10 years, the definition of sustainability is uh, greater. Now, everybody is looking after energy saving, conservation of energy, e-vehicles. So that all talks about sustainable automobile sector, sustainable manufacturing. So this is what about. And now we are, uh, our future goal is to work on minimum quantity lubrication. That is MQL, use of MQL in farming. That is, we started in those directions. Any doubt, you may ask. Yeah, anyone else? Hello, sir. Good afternoon. Good Am afternoon. I audible? Yes. I'm asking that when we are trying to draw the non-symmetrical shape, what kind of fixtures we will have to adopt in these incremental sheet metal forms? Fixtures? Do you have any figures? Yeah, yes, yes, yes. I, I show you an article uh, which is been published uh, in the screen. And now, I is this facility available in NIT Surat, sir? Yes, sir, see this. Uh, this the, the, uh, can, I see, can you see my uh, uh, screen? Yeah, it is visible, sir. Yeah, now you can see that this is somewhere fixture we designed. Now you can see that this fixture is I, I shown you here. Here also it is the same. There will be some top plate. There is some backing lid and it, it, in between there is sheet material. And as you can see that the sheet is fastened between the top plate and the backing plate. And there is at the bottom plate, there is some radius even. So that is called fillet radius, fillet radius. So uh, uh, the physically the uh, fixture is look like this. You can see this is the column. Right? These are the four columns. One, two, three, four. And these are the plates. So what happens is this backing plates is uh, to give the support to the sheet. Support. 
the backing plate is support for supporting and the top plate is above above the above the sheet metal and um, these assembly is fastened using nut and bolts okay uh, nut and bolts uh, so you can see the physical is system like this and as you talk about the change in the fixture obviously if your geometry is the changes uh, you have to make the uh, change in the backing plate change is this in the facility plate. available in nit surat sir yes 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 this particular facility is available at nit surat this the for the, the non symmetrical geometry one yes yes asymmetric geometry also possible this is my paper which is published in archives of civil and mechanical engineering uh, you can refer to this paper this facility is available we are working uh, on this uh, many variety of components we have prepared in last uh, one uh, one and a half years if you want to avail some research in this direction you are highly welcome okay definitely sir. thank you so much thank you for uh, sharing uh, uh, complete your research work uh, you started from the very basics and uh, uh, went to the complete research level there Thank you very much. And you took just one hour and you have uh, made us to learn almost three to four hours of content. Thank you very much for that. And your explanations also uh, very interesting. Thank you very much for this, sir. Uh, yes, so sir. I I definitely believe all the uh, participants learned from you for sure. Yeah. Any further, uh, maybe your doubts or some guidance or say anything required from my side uh, or some uh, assistance in your research. My labs are open. My email ID, I have been shared with you in the chat box. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a nice day.